OK, cool. So TypeScript, it's not a new language, so don't worry. I'm not going to teach you an entire new language in 30 minutes. But it's similar, very similar to JavaScript. It's just JavaScript with types. So just some reminders before we get into the lecture. Um, yeah, so Hackathon is Friday night from 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. You don't have to stay the whole time. You can just come for a few hours or even a few minutes. Um, this is your last chance to get live help from staff before Milestone 2 is due. Um, so hackathons are basically extended office hours. They're just us being there for you guys. So please come if you have questions. Um, and Milestone 2 is due next Tuesday. So this is January 24th at 6 p.m. sharp. And there are requirements for Milestone 2 that you should look up on the WebLab website. The link is right there. And we'll also post a Piazza post with the requirements. Um, and remember that all milestones are required to get credit to complete the course and to compete. Um, another reminder to read the pinned Piazza posts. Uh, we have a lot of Piazza posts. We realize a lot of instructor notes, but they're all important. So please try your best to read all of them. Um, skeleton code is available if you haven't seen the post yet. And we updated some things with Google Auth. So um, please pull it again. And there are a lot of other re resources on Piazza. Um, like the Git guide or database cheat sheet, and there's also a week one crash course um, if you guys want to review. Um, this Friday, we're going to have a lecture called How to Deploy. William's going to teach it, and it, this is a really in, important lecture um, because your MVP has to be deployed um, for us to grade it. And finally, if not the most important thing, you have to get started on Homework 3 very quickly or uh, urgently. Um, we're going to release it at the end of the day. And you will not be able to deploy your website without Homework 3. Homework 3 is Heroku setup. And Heroku is basically the hosting site for your websites. All right, so can anyone tell me what all these ice creams have in common? I guess I kind of gave it away. But they're all types of ice cream, right? We have mint chocolate, right? Uh, chocolate, coffee, strawberry, vanilla, mustard. You know, all these are classic types of ice cream. And, you know, we can say the same about JavaScript. So <laughs> all of these are what we call primitive types of JavaScript. This means that they're the most basic and fundamental types of the language that we've been programming in. So number, Boolean, string, object, undefined, null, symbol, and begins. And we don't really care about the last two. Like, we don't really talk about them. No one really uses them. So don't worry about it. But you can see examples of the top six, which are what we're, we're going to be using in this class. So um, yeah, you guys pretty much should know the syntax by now. Um, so what we've been using is JavaScript. And JavaScript is something called a dynamically typed language. So what this means. It doesn't check for whatever type your variables or functions are when it's compiling. So for example, look at this code above. We have let the, the string or the, um, I guess, the word 5 equal to the number 5. And in JavaScript, we can simply just overwrite that and say 5 equals undefined. Right? It's not going to throw any errors. And when we do console.log 5, which is going to print 5, we want it to print 5, it's going to print undefined because we just overwrote whatever variable we had. So the thing about this, you know, it's a design choice for languages. Um, dynamically typing languages allows for fast programming because you don't have to declare, you know, what type you want a variable to be or what type of function you want it to be. Um, you don't have to declare that when you're coding. And this can be really fast, right? And JavaScript is designed to be a fast language. But if we want to be more safe, how do we make sure that five is always a number? We use TypeScript or any other typed language. So look at this example right here. We have the same code, right? But in this case, we declare that five has to be a typed number. So we, when we try to reassign five to undefined, TypeScript throws an error at us, and we can't even compile the program. So up above, you see the error. Type undefined is not assignable to type number. This just means that we can't as assign undefined to a variable that we already said is going to be a number. So you can't even run the code without fixing the error. And then there's this like little programmer humor that's like, 
dynamic typing versus static typing. So you can see dynamic typing is very fast, right? You can assemble the puzzle very easily. But puzzle pieces are out of place, and it's not, it's not going to run, right? It's not going to fly. But static typing takes a longer time. But in the end, you see all the puzzle pieces are going together in the right way. So you're building up your code from the correct way in the first place. So what is TypeScript formally? TypeScript is a language built on top of JavaScript that enforces static typing. And static typing is just basically making sure that all our variables and functions follow the types that we want them to have. And TypeScript validates that your code works like compile time. Um, so you're not going to run into any errors that you, that you are not going to expect. Um, and it also will save your life on debugging. Um, I just want to mention, like, in the previous lecture, there was this really latent bug, right? Um, and one of the bugs dealt with, um, I guess, like, an object being undefined. And usually in that case, it's an error that can be corrected using types. In TypeScript, you always have to specify, you know, behavior, undefined behavior. So if a variable has a chance to be undefined, you're going to have to specify that. And that's going to help you catch these errors before you even run your code. So as I mentioned before, JavaScript offers no static type checking. So what you've been doing is just writing code in JavaScript. And you know there are some things that, that are happening to help you catch bugs, right? So VS Code makes sure that you don't misspell a variable name, or if you use a variable that you didn't define before, it's going to complain at you. So these are all tools that are helping you, you know, somewhat check your, like, check your code before you even run it. But it's really not enough to ensure that all the types match up, right? So what TypeScript does, it basically adds a cushion to your code. TypeScript, you're going to write code in TypeScript. And as you write code, TypeScript is going to statically check your code. Um, and then when you're done writing your code, when you save the file or when you compile the file, JavaScript is, uh, or TypeScript is going to generate all the code into JavaScript. Um, it's going to translate into JavaScript. And basically, what this process is, is basically just remo removing all the types from your code um, to get JavaScript code. And that can be compiled further, uh, interpreted further, and uh, run. So how do we use types um, in TypeScript? So there are a couple of ways to declare types in TypeScript. So um, the first line is let x um, colon string equals to you know, the string we want to assign. So that's one way to define um, a type. Um, so that means x will always have the type string. Let y colon string is also another way. Um, similarly, in JavaScript, when you just do let variable name, you can do let variable name colon type in TypeScript. And that's, this is basically saying y is not assigned yet, but has to have the type string. And finally, we can do let z equals hello. Um, what this is going to do is just going to, TypeScript is going to infer that the type of z is string because you're literally just assigning z as string. So all of x, y, and z have the type string. And you can see below in the last three lines that if we try to assign x, y, and z to a number, they won't work because they're all of type string. So why do we really care about static typing? I did mention briefly that um, you know, it's helpful to catch a lot of bugs. But what bugs specifically can we catch? So the first bug we can catch, or I guess um, fail-safe method, to use is missing or unnecessary prop values. So in React, we're, we've been using props as an input to our components, right? But we don't really know what's in that props object. You know, anything can be passed into our component. But if we declare a new type, profile props, and have user ID as the only property that this profile props type can have, when we have props as an input to our profile, we can specify that props is of type profile props. And if we try to access a prop that doesn't exist in that type, like password, we're going to get an error. So this ensures that we're passing in the right props to the right components, and we're not using any props that aren't you know, passed down to us. Another thing we can do is um, catch similarly named variables or functions. Um, when we you know, spell, we can obviously like misspell when we're coding. 
Um, so this is an example. So um, if we define a function called call string, which basically just returns the string hi, um, and we define a variable called string as hello, if we want to define a new string of type string, um, we can misspell you know call string called string as call string, and it's going to throw an error at us because call string is of type you know function um, like arguments goes to string, but called string is of type string, right? So um, it's going to throw an error at us because we can't you know use a function type for just a string primitive type. Another thing we can do is handle undefined and null value behavior. So, um, you know, a lot of um, a lot of times when you're coding your website, you're probably going to run into an error that's like um, you can't assign an undefined value or can't read undefined value uh, for this variable. And a lot of this is to do with you know um, not specifying what happens in the case where your variable is undefined. So, what types you can do? is it makes sure that you handle undefined behavior and null value behavior so that you're never going to run into those issues when you actually run your code. Um, so this is an example of something called um, null, I think null coalescing, null value coalescing. Um, so basically what it's saying is that if S is defined, if S is not null, then it's going to print S. But if it's null, it's going to print no string. So you can do this in normal JavaScript, but this is something that goes along very well with TypeScript. And actually, the inventor of null values called it the billion dollar mistake because um, null values basically point to nothing, right? They're, um, they're, ref they're referencing nothing in code or in, in memory. So um, this has caused companies a lot of money, um, you know, billions of dollars because of just null value behavior um, not being caught in production code. And finally, um, we briefly talked about overloaded operators before in JavaScript, but TypeScript helps prevent us from um, using them. So um, I can do like a quick demo here, right? So we saw before that um, if we do like one plus string one in JavaScript, it's going to return a concatenated string one one, and this is really bad, right? Because um, what if you have a state, right? You have a state that's a number, but you accidentally pass in, you, know, you accidentally set it to a string, right? And suppose that you're trying to add, you know, two numbers together, you know, a state plus, you know, plus one, right? If you pass in the string, it's just gonna concatenate that string with the number or with the string one. And it's, you're gonna get like a bogus number in your code uh, or on your actual website. So, um, Basically, JavaScript is horrible on this, but TypeScript won't even allow you to compile this, right? It's going to throw an error when you try to add two, um, two variables together that don't have the same type. So these problems might seem obvious when we're just dealing with you know, one function or one variable, but um, in production, in more complex code bases, there's a really high chance of introducing bugs. And um, this is why a lot of software companies use TypeScript or other type of languages like Java um, because it's so powerful, um, even though it takes more time to code. So does anyone have any questions before we move on? OK, cool. So I'm going to show you guys how to use TypeScript. Um, there's like different ways to use TypeScript with um, primitive types, defining your own types, extending types, uh, using them with functions. So I'm just going to go through them um, relatively quickly. And later on, if you want to use this as reference, you can come back. So I showed you guys how to use primitive types with TypeScript before. Essentially, you're just um, using the colon type to define what variable type you want, or what type you want the variable to be. So in this case, we let message colon string equal to hello world. This means a message will always and forever be a string. And when we try to assign message to the number one, we're going to get a TypeScript error. And some more powerful things we can do with TypeScript is use types within types. So arrays are basically a type themselves, right? They're not a primitive type, but they are a type. 
And what arrays do is they have types within themselves, right? So in this case, we want an array of strings. So the syntax for this, there's two different ways you can do it. You can do string brackets, and then that'll be an array of strings. You can also do array of angle brackets string, and that'll be an array of strings. Personally, I prefer the second way because if you have an array of an array of you know so on and so on, um, the second way is probably the best way you want to do it. It's more clear and verbose, but either way it works. Um, we can also define something called enums, which are enumerations, and this is basically um, making sure that um, your any variable that you define matches whatever is in the enum. So, for example, type color. Color, the enum color can only be the string red, green, or blue. Um, the or is denoted by the, um, by the vertical line, the pipe. So when we try to define a new variable, C, and define it with a type color, we're only going to get three options, blue, green, and red. VS Code helps us a bit with this. Um, and this is powerful because we can't misspell something, right? If we accidentally misspell it, TypeScript is going to complain to us and not compile. We can also define our own types. Um, you saw briefly before with the profile props. Similarly, we can define something like a user type, right? Um, what we do is we do the keyword type and the type name that we want. And it's similar to like an object syntax. So we do equals to um, curly brackets and whatever property we want, colon the type. So in this case, a user, we want to have an ID, name, and is admin. And ID and name are strings, and is admin is a boolean. And one other thing we can do is we can denote optional parameters with the question mark. Um, and this is a common pattern you'll see in typed languages and especially in TypeScript. Um, if anything um, you think is undefined or optional, you can always put a question mark after it. So as an example, if we wanted to define a user um, of type user, uh, we can just simply do const user as normal and colon of the type we want again, which is user and define the fields that we want. And we can even extend this. We can have types within types of types that we defined. So um, we have the same code as the previous slide. And in this case, we can define a second user, say Nick, um, with ID123 and name Nick. And on the bottom here, you can see that we can define a youth, an array of users um, by using the syntax we learned earlier and put user and user2 in the array. And this will not complain at us. And you know, users is of type array of user. We can also extend types. This isn't really used too much, but essentially what we can do is if we have a predefined pre type already um, and we want to extend the type, we can simply put um, whatever property we want, colon type. And this will make a new type called user login with all the previous parameters of user plus the password parameter. And if we define user login variable of type user login, um, we have to use the field password here. So we've dealt with primitive types and you know, higher level types, but we haven't really dealt with functions, right? Functions involved multiple, multiple types. We have types in the parameters and we have types that we're gonna return. So how do we do this? So the general way we do typed functions is the second bullet point here, we have the parameter, colon, the parameter type, all in parentheses, and then another colon of the return type. And that's called the function signature. And you can see an example here with get comments. Our parameter is ID, and ID, it has to be a string. And the return type of the function is a, an array of comments. So we do comment of brackets. And this means that this function takes in an ID, which is a string, and returns an array of comments. And something else to note is that JavaScript has something called first class functions. And what this means is that you can use functions as you, know, as you would use variables. You can pass them into other functions. Um, you can like, use them as like, callback functions, as we mentioned earlier. So in this case, we can define a type, comment props, and even have a function as a field as a property of our type. So handle add, so this comment props type has to have 
a property called handle add, which is of type function goes to void. And void is just meaning that um, the function returns nothing. And we can also use type functions with React, right? There's this really weird looking React type that React, you know, has defined for us. Um, you know, react.change event of HTML input element. Obviously, no one knows what this is, right? You would look on the docs for this. Um, and documentation of, you know, established libraries and frameworks usually have really good typing. So you'll know what types that um, your variables and events have to be. So in this case, our event for handling the change of, you know, typing in an input box is react.change event of HTML input text or element. And once again, the syntax of um, saying a type within a type is angle brackets. So um, don't be surprised by this notation of angle brackets. We can also use typing with async functions, right? And you guys are probably going to use async in your code. Um, and you guys hopefully know what promises are by now. If not, please come to office hours. But um, basically, we can use async um, function. And we just wrap our return type in a promise, right? Because you know async functions are just like normal functions, but they return a promise. And this promise is uh, it's, it takes in something called a, re, a generic type. So um, if you search up the documentation for a promise, it's going to look something like promise of angle brackets T. And what this means is that promise takes in any type. Um, you can wrap any type in a promise. Um, and in this case, we want to wrap an array of comments in a promise. So TypeScript is powerful because it's really easily integratable. If you have any JavaScript project, you can just integrate TypeScript into it, and you will have a TypeScript project. Um, and it re works really well with React. Um, you know, React, when it was built, um, they focused a lot on you know, making documentation really good and um, making it really easy to use. And JavaScript is notoriously hard um, to you know, type check because you know, it has no static type checking. Um, so React has really good documentation for um, for using types. And you don't have to use your entire project in TypeScript if you want. You can just use, you know, like one or two files in TypeScript if you want, um, which is really powerful because, you know, sometimes you don't want to go all in. You just want to try out TypeScript for one of your files. And uh, this person, Kat, is saying that their toxic trait is setting up TypeScript in a project and then just writing JavaScript. And this is valid. You know, you can just set up TypeScript but never touch TypeScript actually, um, because you can choose which files to use in in your actual or in TypeScript in your actual code. Uh, so I'm going to go through two more examples of you know Catbook or Chatbook now um, of uh, typing. So in this case, we can simply use uh, profile props type um, as you know the type of props we want to pass in. So this time, we want profile props to have only the property user ID, and we want user ID to be a string. So uh, we pass in props here, and props has to have type profile props. And that's how we use typing with props. And we can use typing with states also. So the syntax is kind of a little weird, right? You're going to have angle brackets again. Um, but this is just saying that user has to be of type user or undefined. And um, the reason why we have to use undefined is because we set it to undefined first, right? Undefined is not you know, a type of user. So um, when we first set the state, we have to set it to undefined. This is a little bit clunky, but it still ensures that our user is going to be either undefined or user, of type user. Um, and you can see the second statement here. Um, we're defining another state, cat happiness, right? This time, we don't need to declare a type because we initialize it to zero, right? So TypeScript can infer that because we initialize our state to zero, that cat happiness is forever going to be of type number. Sim uh, similarly, as to what we saw before with um, not having to declare the type explicitly for prim primitive types. So in this case, we don't even have to use TypeScript syntax. We can just infer that cat happiness is a number. And it will statically type check our code like that. 
Another example in cat in chatbook is um, defining a bunch of types in one file and then exporting them. So basically, you can see here that we define a user type, a message type, a chat data type, you know, a lot of different types. Uh, we can all define this in one file centrally and just export them, right? We can export the types and then import them to wherever you want to use them. So we don't have to, you know, make our code messy. So how would you set up TypeScript in your project? You might be interested after this lecture in using TypeScript, you know, in one of one or two of your files or even your entire code base. So usually what you can do is search up, you know, a tutorial on how to set up TypeScript. Um, and here's a good tutorial to use. Um, you can go back to the slides and click on the link. Um, I would recommend using the TypeScript skeleton um, that we have released with, along with our current skeleton. Um, we have some issues with the TypeScript skeleton with Google Auth still. Um, so if you have issues when setting up that skeleton, please come to Office Hours and we can help. Um, it was working you know, earlier when we were trying to use it, but it may not be bug safe still. Um, yeah, and when you set up a project in TypeScript, something called tsconfig.json is created. And what this is, is basically a file of basically how strict your TypeScript wants to be. So you can define which files to use for TypeScript, um, you know, how strong you want type checking to be, etc. So TypeScript is designed to be very user friendly and um, allows you to um, sort of determine how much of TypeScript you want to use. So I'm going to do a quick demo with Chatbook now um, and show you guys how much of TypeScript is actually in TypeScript Chatbook. So this is the code you've seen before, right? Profile props is a new type that we're defining and user ID is simply um, a property of the type we want to use. And we're setting state, you know, here. But you should see how much TypeScript is actually in this code, right? You know, this code is basically the same as our code from JavaScript. And basically the only thing new is the things in green, right? These three lines plus, you know, a few type declarations. So TypeScript isn't really clunky in the sense that you can use TypeScript very minimally and still get a lot of benefits out of it. Um, so in this case, you know, profile.tsx, um, we're not really using that much TypeScript, but uh, for example, if we want to, you know, define a new function like, you know, change our states, right? Change states equals to, um, I guess, say you want to set user to like the string user and set cat happiness to a string like one, right? It's going to throw an error at us. TypeScript string is not assignable to parameter of type set action user, right? And this makes sense because earlier we made sure that the type or that the variable user, the state user, only could take on the types user and undefined or capital user and undefined. So here we can't even set it to a string. Similarly, in set cat happiness, if you try to set it to a string, it's going to throw an error because we can't assign a string to a number. So you can see for just a little amount of code, we can get a lot of benefit out of it and avoid a lot of errors that we might encounter in, in runtime. So you might be wondering, how can I get more of TypeScript, right? You know, TypeScript is cool. How do I, um, how do I learn more about it? So here are some programming classes that you guys might have taken uh, or might have heard of. Um, so 6101, which used to be 6009, um, basically teaches you how to program in Python. Python is a language, another language like JavaScript in that it's not statically typed, it's only dynamically typed. So you're not gonna get the benefits of statically, static typing. But the course after that, 6102, which used to be 6031, um, introduces statically typed software in TypeScript. So um, similar to what I've been doing um, in this lecture, you're gonna learn all about typing. You're gonna hate it, you're gonna love it, um, and you're gonna make sure that your code is bug safe with um, static typing. Um, some other more advanced courses after 031 you can take 
are 6.1.10, which is used to be 6.035, uh, which teaches you how to make a compiler uh, for a statically typed language, and 6.1.12, which is 6.818, um, uh, which teaches you how to make compilers in a uh, dynamically typed language. Um, and these are both very great courses that I haven't personally taken, but I've heard very good reviews about them. So I'll definitely check them out. Yeah, and um, a few more resources. So um, if you want to play around with TypeScript without actually using it in your project, you can go to this thing called TypeScript Playground. Um, you know, basically allows you to, you know, basically just play around with TypeScript, you know, say x equals i, right? You're going to get an error. Wow, TypeScript, awesome. So I would recommend if you're interested in learning more about TypeScript, go to TypeScript Playground, play around. Um, and again, if you want to use our TypeScript skeleton, um, you should go to the um, skeleton code repo that we posted and then go to the TypeScript branch. Um, you'll get all the benefits of TypeScript there. 